So President Obama is asking Congress to sign off on $3.7 billion in emergency funding that would go to help the influx of immigrants at our southern border right now. But the critics are not so quick to jump on board here. They say that the aid request doesn't actually do anything to secure the border. Congressman Ted Poe of Texas is a member of the House Judiciary Committee and vice chairman of the Subcommittee on Immigration and Border Security. Sir, welcome. Good to have you here today. Thank uh, you, Martha. What do you make of this $3.7 billion request? Well, it's misguided in the sense, assume that we are in a sinking ship. There's a hole in the ship. We need to plug the hole. We need to fix the border. But rather than do that, we're just bailing out the ship full of water. And that's what this bill does. It, it offers more pails to bail out the water. So it's misguided on what the, the real problem is and what we should do about it. 3.7, uh, and we just listened to a, sort of a detail of where the money goes. A lot of it is into facilities and for judges and that kind of thing, as you say. It, it was interesting. We looked back this morning at the latest estimate, the most recent estimate we could find at what it would have cost to build the, the fence across the border, and that's about $6.5 billion. Uh, so now you've got a $3.7 billion request to basically you know, plug the hole and take care of the, the people who came through it, right? Well, it's not going to plug the hole. What we need is the National Guard on the border. I introduced legislation to put 10,000 National Guard uh, members on the border with the governor's request. We have to stop the problem of people coming into the United States illegally first and then deal with the folks that are here. And so the bill is misguided because it doesn't deal with the problem. It deals with a symptom. So it sounds like the president's not going to get his money. Well, it, it, the bill will come, of course, to the House. I hope we adjust it to add the National Guard on the border, reimburse uh, states like Texas who've already spent a uh, million dollars a week protecting the United States border, put the National Guard, but also deal with the issue of immigration judges. But the long term, we need to make it, have a plan for these people who have come to the United States yeah. to reunite them to their home country. That yeah. should be the plan. I mean, it's a, it's a mess at the border. I think everybody can agree on that. And the picture that you're seeing, you just saw a moment ago on your screen, is the ongoing uh, hearing on, Cong on, on the Hill in the Homeland Security Department as they talk about what's going on down there. And we'll keep in one eye on that uh, as well. You know, when you look at this overall situation uh, that's going on down here, and you remember what President Obama said about it in the past. I want to go to the soundbite that we have from President Obama talking about what a great job they're doing on the border. Thanks to the outstanding work of Janet and Alan and everybody who's down here working at the border, we've answered those concerns. Under their leadership, we have strengthened border security beyond what many believed was possible. They wanted more agents at the border. Well, we now have more boots on the ground on the southwest border than at any time in our history. So this administration claims they've done more than anybody to stop this problem. Well, they may have done some, but the issue is, is the border secure? And it is not. The president is absolutely incorrect when he says that the border is secure. You can go down there and stand on the Texas side and watch people cross in from Mexico. Where are people there to, to stop them? They're not. They're missing in action. And so why didn't the president go down to the Texas-Mexico border while he's in Texas raising money for the Democrat Party and look for himself to see the real crisis that is occurring because the border simply just is not secure. You know, another thing I find really surprising, you know, is the irony in this. We have illegals coming across the border and going into these facilities. So the illegals are welcome into these facilities, and yet congressmen who want to figure out what's going on with this situation are not allowed anywhere near it without some very strong stipulations. Here's Congressman Bridenstein, who was on with us earlier. I want to get your thoughts on what he said. I'm a federal representative of the people. This is a federal facility on federal property, and they're saying I can't come for another three weeks. Uh, now we finally got them to capitulate that I can come on the 12th, uh, which is still too long. But here's the thing. We need unfettered access. And when a member of Congress, when a representative of the people wants to show up at one of these facilities, we shouldn't be rejected or turned away seemingly for political purposes. Why on earth would that be, Congressman? 
once again, they want to make sure that the public and members of Congress get the scripted version. Same thing occurred at Lackland Air Force Base down in San Antonio. We were allowed to go down there, but you can't talk to anybody. You can't talk to the staff. You can't take any photographs. You can't do any uh, audio recording. You can't do anything. You just have to follow us along the trail, and we will show you what we want you to see. Why are they acting this way? Because they, they have something to hide, and that's very unfortunate. It's and incredible. That, Congressman Bridenstine's right. You know, I, I think everyone can understand wanting to protect the children uh, in this situation, which I think is what the administration would say is the reason for that. But why you can talk to the staff, the people who are heading up these operations down there, that is completely undemocratic under any definition that you can think of. So these are the pictures that we have so far, folks, and we're working to get more. Uh, Congressman Poe, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you, Martha.